We are expecting heavy rain throughout the weekend. Heavy rain throughout the weekend. Local totals, we're told, in an upward of 10 inches or more that is definitely possible for the city of New Orleans. A flood watch will remain in effect through Tuesday morning. We could face a sustained tropical storm force of wind. So we're talking wet and we're talking wind here, right here for the city of New Orleans. We're continuing to monitor the levels of the Mississippi River. Again, in the briefing said the levels can get an upward of 17 feet. We will monitor that. Also, we're staying in tight communication, of course, and in coordination with local, state, and federal partners. Federal partners reached out a couple of days ago as we have been watching uh, Crystal Ball. We said earlier on at the start of hurricane season, which was on Monday, that this was going to be a very active season, meaning throughout the year. And with this being the third named tropical storm, it's pretty consistent, meaning the information that we're getting, very reliable. So now is the time to start paying attention and getting ourselves ready. Pay attention, get yourselves ready. Prepare for rain, gather your supplies. And this is a big one. We really want to continue to stay in close contact and communication with the public every step of the way. We saw this last year as we were preparing for Barry, and an upward of 68,000 residents signed up to receive our text alerts through NOLA Ready in real time. We're doing and preparing to do the same, of course, for this season, but particularly this storm. So we're asking residents to text Crystal Ball to 888-777. That's C-R-I-S-T-O-B-A-L to 888-777. Over the past couple of days, we've gathered about additional 3,000 residents that have taken advantage, and that is growing. Colin can give you more on that. All of our residents who signed up to receive these alerts last year, you're already included in the number for this year and for Crystal Ball. So we're continuing to grow of that level of information in terms of communi uh, communication and contact, but we need your help. Sign up because we need and we want you to be prepared with real-time information. Also, this is the time in terms of preparation. We're going to be relaxing uh, our parking restrictions or lifting them as it relates to getting your vehicles to higher and safe ground. That will begin on tomorrow morning. We want to be proactive. We understand that these are still unprecedented times. Pandemic, absolutely. Hurricane season, yes. And in the midst of just civil unrest in our country, but we will get through it, no doubt about it, as we've demonstrated that we will and we can move those vehicles, trash. We shouldn't have to wait for hurricane season or an event to remove trash from the streets. And I mean, sanitation is doing it, but I'm talking about public responsibility, littering throughout the city. Please do me a favor. Go out, pick up trash, plastic bags, collect it, throw it in the trash can. It's important. This helps us relieve an added burden or tension to our very vulnerable drainage system. It is a system. It's sewage and water board. It's, of course, the drain lines affiliated with the Department of Public Works. All things working together keeps us safe. This also means freeing our drains from trash that we as people put on the ground. This is the time. In addition to trash, your trash can receptacles at your home. Make sure that you're not placing them out in front of your home on the lawn for, again, this storm is coming our way. We do not want, with the high water expected, 
trash cans floating, debris tops over, flowing into the drains. We need your help. Preparedness. Loose debris. Collect that. Gather it up. Make sure you're focusing on your pets as well. Um, your uh, outdoor furniture and the like. Make sure you're tying it down. This storm appears to be very aggressive. We hope that it moves fast. We do not want it to sit and rest over the city of New Orleans for hours and hours and then sometimes days. We do not want that. However, we need to be prepared. This is where you come in more than ever. We're also asking you, do not get distracted with so many things going on. We also have to stay focused on all of the different levers and layers that we're on, whether that's the pandemic, everything still remains, meaning social distancing, no large gatherings, adhering to the guidelines and mandates of the city of New Orleans for phase one. More information will be coming to you as we move forward, looking towards phase two. That is not today. Today, we're in phase one throughout the next week for sure. Adhere to our guidelines, very important. We have been in constant communication with all of our health care facilities and all are prepared to treat our remaining residents who are hospitalized and being treated for COVID. They will continue to get the best quality of service that we, again, our healthcare professionals have demonstrated that they prov provide on a daily basis and we appreciate them as well, continue to. So we will continue to keep you residents, public, engaged, updated throughout this um, tropical storm event. So just be prepared for all communications coming out of the city of New Orleans as well as a unified command with our partners. So right now I'm going to turn it over to our Director of Homeland Security, uh, Mr. Colin Arnold at this time. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Good morning. Tropical Depression Cristobal is forecast to exit the Yucatan Peninsula tonight and move northward through the Gulf of Mexico over the weekend. As of 10.15 a.m., a tropical storm watch has been issued for our entire area. It will likely regain tropical storm strengths as, as it moves through the Gulf, bringing impacts to our area Sunday and Monday primarily. Currently, the greatest threat here in New Orleans is expected to be heavy rainfall and minor to moderate coastal flooding. I would add in that tropical storm force winds throughout this will be a possibility and probably a probability. Those heavy rains could come well before the storm itself. So as the mayor mentioned, we are suspending parking restrictions for neutral grounds and sidewalks beginning at 8 a.m. Saturday morning. Please move your vehicles to higher ground to protect them from street flooding. Depending on the predicted storm surge, we will have to very closely uh, evaluate our areas of the city that are outside levee protection. That being Venetian Isles, Irish Bayou, and Lake Catherine. The Flood Protection Authority at this point is not closing Chef Highway floodgate. However, as we all know from past experience, that could change rapidly and the situation out there could change rapidly. We will be in contact and watch this very closely in case we have to make any decisions about people outside of levee protection needing to leave. The residents in those areas, they're great people, they pay attention. A lot of them are, are, are boaters. They know, uh, they watch the weather. They'll be watching this and I encourage that. The wind impacts will depend on uh, exact track, intensity and structure of the storm as it approaches the coast. There's still some, um, some uncertainty with that but the consensus modeling is somewhat coming together that we are going to get wind impacts. If we see tropical storm force winds, power outages of course are possible. If you or a loved one requires power for medical special needs, please call 311 to enroll in the special needs registry. The New Orleans Office of Homeland Security and Emergency Preparedness has been activated in the city's emergency operations center for about three months now, but we will be transitioning to a tropical storm activation tomorrow. Representatives from our public safety, infrastructure, and human services agencies will be in the EOC 24-7 to monitor and respond to impacts. Additionally, the Real-Time Crime Center will be 
active 24-7, as they always are, to assist in real-time monitoring of weather impacts across the city. We have declared an emergency for the potential impacts we will see from Cristobal. I'm asking for residents to prepare now for heavy rain and potential power outages. Clear leaves and debris from gutter and, uh, gutters and downspouts and clean in front of catch basins. Call 311 to report a catch basin that is not functioning. As the mayor mentioned, secure your outdoor furniture, your garbage bins. And really right now you need to be gathering supplies including food, water and medications for at least three days. Additionally, with COVID-19 in this landscape, please include masks, hand sanitizers, and dis disinfectants in your supplies. When you're getting supplies, think about your homebound and elderly family members and friends who may need help acquiring them. Neighbors helping neighbors is what we are all about and why New Orleans is resilient. Again, the special needs registry. The special needs call center will be taking calls beginning Saturday and remain open throughout the event. Call 311 to be connected if you have medical or mobility needs and might need extra help during this event. Protesters who are planning to participate in demonstrations during the weekend should be extra aware of the weather conditions. As I've said, there's going to be heavy rain, potential street flooding and winds, and that can all arrive before this system actually arrives itself. Please put your safety first. And now is the time to stay, pay attention and stay connected. As the mayor mentioned, you can text Cristobal to 888-777. If you signed up last year for Barry, you were opted in. You do not have to sign up again. Follow us on social media at NOLA Ready. And all this information that I'm talking about can be found at our website, ready.nola.gov. That we're facing a tropical storm early in the season is an indication of what's to come, and it's been predicted. The National Weather Service is continuing to predict an above average storm season. Stay informed. Get ready today and tomorrow and shelter in place. Let's get this one right. All right, who do we hear from next? Sorry. Superintendent Sean Ferguson, New Orleans Police Department. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Colin. Good morning. New Orleans Police Department stands prepared and ready for Tropical Storm Cristobal. New Orleans Police Department is currently at full staff, full strength. Uh, any and all officers who have been impacted by COVID-19 uh, have since returned back to work. So we have full staff. Starting 7 a.m. on Sunday morning, we will transition to a 12-hour shift uh, throughout this event in preparation for uh, increase uh, expectation of increase in calls for service or uh, any other services that we may have to provide throughout this event. Our equipment has been tested and stands ready. Boats, high, waters, gen high water vehicles, and generators are all prepared. Our barricades are ready if needed and with regards to Operation Underpass. With regards to Operation Underpass, we're asking if you see any standing water anywhere underneath the overpass or in the streets. Do not, do not, do not drive through that standing water. We do not want you to lose your vehicle first and foremost. We do not wish for you to flood a business nor a residence throughout this event. We encourage our citizens to put your safety first. Prioritize your safety as the number one goal in getting out of this event. As Colin just recently mentioned, protesters, also, please put your safety first. This is a wet event that we are expecting. We do not know the amount of water that we will receive, but we must put all of ourselves in a position to be out of this, safe, out of this situation safely. Make sure your elderly family members, your elderly neighbors are ready and prepared with their kids as well during this event. The less you put yourself at risk, is the less you put our first responders at risk in an attempt to save you or your loved ones. And because we are currently dealing with a public, a current uh, public health emergency, we're asking our citizens to continue to have your gloves, your masks, your hand sanitizer at your disposal. Please have that in your hurricane kit as we prepare for this weekend. And we also know that individuals may attempt to take advantage of this situation. And we're asking you to please take notice. The New Orleans Police Department will not 
and shall not condone or tolerate any criminal activity, specifically looting, throughout any event. We are in partnership with our public safety partners, and we are hoping to get through this safely. So again, please be prepared. Thank you. Next, we have Garcon Corbin from the Sewage and Water Board. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, Mayor. Good morning, everyone. Uh, our team has spent the last few days running through their hurricane checklist, and I can say with confidence that we are prepared for crystal ball. Our drainage uh, pump stations will be fully staffed throughout the event. All 99 of our drainage pumps are operational and available to respond to what we anticipate will be heavy rains. We are securing our job sites around the city, making sure that anything that can fly away is tied down or stored away. We have positioned our fleet of trucks on heavy, uh, on heavy equipment to protect them against damage and flooding and to make it accessible in case of an emergency. We are driving along our open canals, making sure um, that there are no uh, impediments or large uh, pieces of debris that we needed to pick up. We have tested our power equipment, including our three remaining steam turbines and our backup EMDs. They are all in working order. We are in constant communication with Entergy. They are a crucial part of our power supply, and they are certainly more important than ever in terms of uh, be part of our redundant system. Especially when, with the loss of Turbine 5, we will be using our EMDs at the Carrollton Station when the rain begins. They will be loud, but they, are, they will provide much needed reliable electricity for our drainage pumps. I want to be clear that with the amount of rain forecasted, it is more likely than more likely that we will experience street flooding. The drainage system can handle a conservative volume of, of stormwater, but it has limits. Capacity and age will play a major factor in how we perform. It will take time for our canals to collect our, and our pumps to move the rain that comes from intense, prolonged downpours. It's all about intensity. Please stay clear of low-lying areas, especially underpasses. We stand ready to drain the city as fast as possible. Thank you. Thank you, Gassar. Ramsey? <clears throat> Thank you, Mayor. Um, thanks, y'all, for being here. Very quickly, from the general infrastructure and operations side of the city, um, at present, we have all, <clears throat> pardon me, DPW crews on standby. We have five uh, VAC trucks fueled and ready to deploy. They are out there. You will see them. Um, pardon me. We have dump trucks loaded with barricades ready to deploy as needed if this uh, storm uh, requires it. We have about uh, several hundred million dollars worth of active construction sites right now. Uh, all of those contractors, if you see them in your neighborhood, are securing down uh, their materials, ensuring that any um, stockpiles adjacent to a catch basin uh, is secured so we do not um, impact our small line drainage system. You will see contractors for city government um, and the joint infrastructure program in cooperation with Sewage and Water Board working tomorrow. They're going to be securing down all of those job sites. As you drive around, if you are driving around, pre please look out for people working on the sides of our roads uh, on our construction sites. We have a ton of them. Um, our statistics tell us that our catch basin cleaning and our small line drainage uh, work this year has gone really well. Um, that work uh, is showing um, effectively um, in some of our rain events of late. So that's a good thing to see. As the mayor and Colin said, all parking restrictions will be suspended beginning at 8 a.m. tomorrow. If you do park in a neutral ground, please drive very slowly. Um, take care of our grass, particularly Napoleon Avenue. We have a meandering, beautiful walking trail with new trees. Please be w very aware of the impact your vehicle could have on them. If your trash day is in the next several days, um, be conscious of when you put your can out and bring it in immediately. Do not let a trash can sit on the side of the road and float away in the event we have street flooding. 
Um, additionally, parks and parkways, all crews are on standby. If you see a tree limb fall or you see a tree emergency, please report it to 311 and our folks will be out there uh, as soon as they possibly can. On our um, city asset side, our generators are in a very good position. Uh, our buildings are secure. Our um, building assessments pre-storm have gone very well um, compared to, to years in, in, in years past. And finally, on the Entergy side, our partners at Entergy um, are, uh, have notified their crews, their contractors are, sit, are standing by to safely restore power and gas where and when uh, needed. Uh, that is all. Thank you so much. Graham, yes, can you provide them just with information on how we are securing uh, Canal Collapse? In yes. Yeah, so on the canal collapse site, uh, we started storm prep. Uh, the owner, I should say, started storm prep in coordination with the fire department about two or three days ago. There will be a stalling of uh, demolition work over the weekend as they prepare the site as much as they possibly can. But we're seeing a very stable um, site there, uh, given the, the winds that we may uh, or may not have. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. All right. Well, thank you all again. Uh, we do stand prepared uh, to respond to Tropical Storm Crystal Ball. Uh, it has been demonstrated by our leaders of this community, all of our department uh, heads as well. We are uh, prepared in a unified manner uh, with our local, state, and federal partners as well. So with that, Ms. LaTanya, we'll take any questions that um, our friends have. What do you mean? Well, protests are planned. I say they move forward as planned in peace uh, and in harmony and uplifting, you know, um, what we're standing against uh, and being in solidarity doing so. Uh, so we are um, just making sure that they also are aware that they are alert about Tropical Storm Crystal Ball uh, when we do expect to see rainfall. Uh, and we do expect uh, to see starting Saturday, leading up again Sunday, uh, being maybe the heaviest, uh, also going into Monday. But we want our people all uh, to be mindful, to be respectful, to be prepared. And, um, and that's, that's pretty much it, you know, be as prepared as we are. Sure. So you're talking about if we, we call for an evacuation? Well, if, in fact, lower lining areas, we're continuing to uh, monitor and watch. And, of course, should there need to be a call for uh, an evacuation, we will do that. Um, and as far as the city is concerned, our city uh, wide city assisted evacuation plan, we stand ready to implement, implement that should it be called. Uh, but we are prepared. Anything you want to add on this, Colin? This is a low-level storm. There will be no uh, city-assisted evacuation pre-storm if, as you're referring to, there is localized flooding in an area that we would need to get into to uh, move people. We have boats and high-water vehicles positioned around the city geographically that are run by the fire department, police department, and EMS. We'll utilize social distancing and N95 masks to move people. And we have a few rec centers on standby, socially distanced, that we can use for shelters. Okay. Well, sure. Unexpected conditions as well. Come on, Cassandra. Can you repeat the first part? I'm. All our frequency changes have been tested, have been calibrated, and we don't anticipate any issues. That doesn't mean that something may not cannot happen or may not go wrong, but we don't anticipate that. But we've we've tested them, and they all are in working order.
there's always power issues with our fragile system. It's an old system, old pieces of equipment. We do everything we can proactively to anticipate some, some issues. We've been doing that for the last uh, several months, as I explained in the last press conference. We've done a lot of uh, proactive work in anticipation, but things could go wrong at moment's notice. And our staff is, is remarkably competent and, and have a lot of expertise, and they're on the ready to respond to any adversity that they may face. And reminding that if the uh, pumping stations will be fully staffed, there'll be hands on deck should we do have an issue with power to therefore restore work to do that. Absolutely. Uh, the last um, event we had, we, we had lightning strike uh, hitting pumping station number one. Uh, mm -hmm. causing uh, drainage to slow for about 45 minutes. Right. But again, staff, team acted very swiftly and prevented uh, significant flooding in the area. However, we did see uh, in real time when that water comes down, the intensity of it, you know, that, that has an impact. But we're prepared. Well, if it's off topic, then you're off topic, not right now. Okay, we can make time for that after uh, this focus. It's very important that we stay on track. Well, yeah, we just gave you an update on that in terms of the site, the owners, the contractors who have the responsibility not only to demolish but also to secure the site in preparation for Tropical Storm Crystal Ball. We're looking at an impact as it relates to stop work for about three days, okay? We will pick up, they will pick up uh, their time moving forward after uh, we see the impacts of Tropical Storm Crystal Ball. It remains a, a very uh, sensitive, unstable situation and environment. However, uh, very pleased, I would say, with the contractors that have been on the job. Any other questions? Thank you all so much. So we'll regroup. I'm going to let my folks go. If you can tell me what questions you do have, that will uh, dictate if I keep my chief or not. If not, then we're going to move on. So look like me and you, Chief. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So we're good, unless you all want to hang out. But I just, I don't want you to stand in sun longer than you have to. Although I know you may like getting the sun. I do. It's especially that vitamin D. I know in, in me, which they say is deficient in black folks due to this COVID-19. Yes, indeed. Okay. So we'll move forward, um, sir. Well, there has been uh, some rhetoric, even some rumors, as I call, you know, as it relates uh, to violence uh, uh, as in, in, in our protest. Um, and we will remain prepared as we've been uh, for the past, over the past seven days. And so um, I'm going to ask Chief Ferguson to step on up and just give you a little bit more of how we're prepared but also uh, standing up and standing with our protesters for a peaceful uh, demonstration. Chief? Thank you, Mayor. As the Mayor mentioned, I mean, I think our actions have spoken louder than words. From day one, we have been side by side with the protesters in a peaceful manner to ensure safety for everyone and giving them the platform to exercise their constitutional rights. As far as are we prepared, are there any concerns for tonight or going through the weekend? There's always concerns, but we, we stand prepared as always. Uh, we continue to work with our federal and state partners as needed uh, with regards to these protests. Uh, 
and we will continue to do so throughout this weekend. Uh, you asked something about rubber bullets or rubber pellets. That is under investigation. And I'll tell you this, if we did use that, I will own that. But that is under investigation now, and we will, we will discuss that further once we have more information with regards to that. I have received videos. I have received complaints about that. So my force investigation team is looking into that. And as I am given the information, we will continue to be transparent. We will continue to own whatever actions that we have taken, and we'll discuss collectively whether it was justified or not. But nevertheless, we will be transparent as always. Any other questions? I mean, I just I would like to wait and see what is stated in that proposal. Uh, I mean, we as a law enforcement agency, we have to have some resources uh, when we're dealing with any situation. So I'm open to discussion. Uh, if they want to, if anyone wants to make a recommendation with regards to removing tear gas as a, as a source or a resource or tool within our toolbox, I'm open to suggestions as to what would be the next step of engagement, what would be the next tool that we should use. So I think this is a bigger discussion that should be had and not had on camera or, or in a pu publicity stunt. It is about us talking collectively, how do we move together forward, together as a community. It's the same partners we've continued to have. Our, our state partners, our federal partners have continued to be with us throughout, not just throughout this protest, but every event that we may have in this city, be it Essence Festival, Mardi Gras, Jazz Fest, whatever. We have our federal and state partners boots on the ground with us at every event. So yes, you will see our partners, you may very well see our partners out there with us. I, I, I have been saying from day one of, from what, two, three days ago, do not take the bait. We absolutely expect outsiders to come in here, and they have been coming in, as I've stated, and, and trying to entice our community to escalate their behavior, which is unfortunately what we experienced a couple of nights ago. Will it just be this weekend? I don't know. But we are prepared for whatever may come our way. We have not received any credible information, but we have heard, I've have received numerous uh, concerns from our community about that because this is what they have heard. And we're, we're standing prepared and ready for that as well. We, are, we have been on the lookout for this throughout this entire process. And we've been fortunate enough to have a community that did not allow this to happen. And let me say this while I'm, I'm talking about that. The other night, the community was very instrumental in stopping, I'm talking about the protesters, stopping individuals who wish to break glass, who is attempting to vandalize with spray paint throughout these protests. The protesters themselves have been an enforce, uh, an enforcer for us, like a, a force multiplier for us and working for us and with us and not against us. But at some point in time, we just have to stand collectively together and say, this is it. This is our city and we're going to own it. And this is what we've been doing this week. My reaction, my reaction is that our officers are trained to respond uh, to any um, confrontations of that matter, meaning uh, when uh, warnings and our warnings are given, uh, but yet are not followed. And when there is a deliberate choice uh, to confront uh, and to overstep the guidelines that have been articulated by law enforcement, then our department is trained to respond as they need to, but with respect, with constitutional policing practices, and that's exactly what was demonstrated on Wednesday. But let me tell you, effective policing in terms of community policing and practices have been demonstrated by the New Orleans Police Department from day one. So um, we're going to continue to do that. Um, as the chief mentioned, we do not hide information. We stand up uh, to it, any challenges, and we own it. 
we own it. We act swiftly and accountability goes across all lines. That builds trust in our community and this community, this city has been working for years to build that trust. And we're not going to allow, we're not going to allow an event to happen, meaning to escalate and push us off and knock us down when we have been building community and trust for years and we're going to stand up, you know, for our people, stand up with our protesters in solidarity. But violence is something that we will not allow. We cannot afford to. Too much is on the line. And that means the protection of the people that we serve in this city, all of our people. So we thank you for that question. But you know what? We've demonstrated how effectively our officers are trained to protect and serve. And that's what we will do. I stand with them. Doing right, you got it. Doing wrong, oh no. Well, I don't know about uh, other streets, uh, you know, that you're referring to. However, that is absolutely a land use matter under the authority of the New Orleans City Council. Um, as uh, mayor of the city, having been uh, involved in, in hearing and understanding the work that has gone on throughout the community, building support uh, for the renaming of of Jefferson Davis Parkway to uh, Dr. Norman C. Francis. Uh, I'm a graduate of Xavier University of Louisiana. Uh, I know what Xavier has meant to me, to the city of New Orleans, to the state of Louisiana, and to the black community throughout the U.S. of A. So with that, the longest serving president of any college or university in the U.S.A., our guy right here, son of the city of New Orleans, I, he deserves that, and I'm standing with that. So thank you so much. You all have a good day. All right. You have been listening to Mayor Cantrell update the public on storm preps and the protests. A couple of the key takeaways, she said, with the expectation of 4 to 10 inches of rain, she is asking people uh, to be weather aware, to make your storm preparations in your own homes. And also starting tomorrow morning, she is asking that you move your cars to higher ground. They're going to lift the parking restrictions tomorrow. Um, also, if you or a loved one has special needs and you need power, they're expecting we will probably lose power at some point uh, during the storm. So if you need power for medical reasons, call 311 and sign up for that special needs registry. Also, you can use that number to report problems with catch basins. Um, with respect to protesters, uh, they are welcoming the protesters, but they are saying make sure that you are weather aware. Uh, the Sewage and Water Board, Gassan Corban, saying, quote, we are prepared for Cristobal. He said all 99 pumps are operational. The three turbines and the EMDs are working uh, and the pumping stations will be fully staffed. So that is encouraging news there. But of course, he also said that sometimes you never can tell what's going to happen. And then with regard to the protests, uh, Superintendent Ferguson said that they will not tolerate any looting um, regardless of the event. Uh, so he said New Orleans police will be uh, ready at the ready. He was asked specifically about the alleged use of rubber pellets over the last few days, uh, probably Wednesday night. He said, if we did, I will own that. That was a quote. And he said, we are investigating that. We will be transparent. He was then asked about the use of tear gas, and he said he would be happy to talk about potential alternatives to get the same job done. Uh, he left the crowd or the crowd of reporters there with the same message, do not take the bait in terms of uh, pro protesters from out of town trying to encourage a disruptive um, demonstration. And he gave kudos to the New Orleans demonstrators who in many cases, he said, stopped instances from ex escalating, taking away, um, stopping people from creating any sort of vandalism along the route. So uh, that is the latest. We are going to have much more on the storm preps and tonight's demonstrations coming up tonight uh, or later this afternoon on the Eyewitness News and then the later newscasts tonight as well as on our website and social media pages. We'll now return you to regular programming.